Hello and welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name's Andy, and I'm joined by Drew. Hi. We're just hanging out in the Armadillo comic book store, getting ready to close up because we're going to go to uh, the Lancaster Flea Market soon. But we decided to take uh, a moment. We have a few minutes waiting for my brother, Ken, to get here. Take a few minutes to talk about... Comic books turn into movies. And great comic book moments. Let's take a tour of the store. Let's go. Here's the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> This is Rogue Two. This is Rogue Two. Captain Solo, do you copy? Rogue Two, Captain Solo. Shoot the tow cable! Shoot the tow cable! Yeah, right underneath, under there. Cable to catch! Yes, we're nerds. Of course, this isn't actually a snow speeder from um, the movie Empires. This is one of the Ralph McQuarrie designs that was rejected originally. They made a whole line of toys based on the um, rejected ideas of the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I thought this would, this would be too small for a snow speeder, anyways. They definitely needed the dual cockpit. Little Top Gun there. <laughs> Three quarters of a mile, man. I caught them all. <laughs> And shortly after that happened, this happened. Hey! That's right. Sorry, ladies, I'm no longer single. <laughs> and long time before that. Dun, dun, dun. You know, when you put it in perspective with the light angle lens? Yeah. I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> we have dioramas of all the Star Wars movies set up in your store. Yeah. Oh no, it's the Rancor! Oh no, it's the Rancor! <laughs> <laughs> We don't need this scum. scum. You are the chosen one! We're moving on. Yes, we are. We're just, again, hanging out in a comic book store waiting for, uh, waiting for my brother to get here. And we're talking about those obscure comic book characters that have been turned into, well, obscure comic book movies. Such as, sir? Such as Vampirella. Vampirella. Vampirella is basically your Buffy-type character who fights other monsters. Of course, she's a vampire. So that's what makes that character very interesting. But there was a low-budget movie made. I saw it once a while ago. It's actually not bad. You know, she has the right costume if you know what I mean, and she fills it out quite nicely, if you know what I mean. I'm going to have to Netflix that. I'm not really, I'm not familiar with that. But that classic storyline, I think, is done much better by Mr. Hellboy himself. <laughs> no, you got to make like Dark Horse. So we go into that right now. You all know Hellboy. Yes, we do. There's another comic book film that was turned into a movie. Uh, really obscure, but if anybody out there remembers it. Oh, yeah. I am the law. We're still It's cool about this issue. This is actually the uh, the Apocalypse War that this the band Anthrax did that song. I am the law was based on that part of the comic book series. Mm -hmm. This is actually the Apocalypse War that they refer to in the song. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a dork. That impresses well, me. Wait, here we go. Here's your helmet. Oh, oh here we go. Well, yes, but that, yeah, there he is. There he is, right there. Hey, boy. I see another heart. I see another uh, comic book that was obscurely turned into a into a movie. If you will follow me. Oh, Dick, Dick Tracy. Tracy. Dang, yeah. Yep. Dick Tracy himself. Who yeah, was, it was uh, uh, Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty, yeah. Warren Beatty was in that, and it had Madonna. 
you know. Yeah, that, that movie, I don't know, something kind of odd about that. That was one of those first comic book movies where they actually really created a uh, faux reality. Yeah, they did everything, like all the... All yeah, the, the colors, colors, everything was, no, nothing was <coughs> quite exactly right. It wasn't, I, I, I thought it was pretty good, you know, but I thought that there were there were some things about it that, you know, could have been better. And That's unfortunately, sadly enough, it was regarded. It was considered the worst movie of that year that came out, but I don't know why it wasn't that bad. If we take half an effort and look into it, we can find another uh, movie that was not quite as good as that. Uh, speaking of comic books turned movie, I just mm. comic book the movie. I love this shirt. I got this shirt from Mr. Mark Hamill himself. Yes, I'm talking about Mr. Dun, 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 dun. Luke Skywalker himself. The hell we could have missed this one. I don't know. But the crow, ah! Mr. Gideon, who? You're not paying attention. He just doesn't have a major motion picture on top. Mm -hmm. This is a um, a reprint of the uh, the crow after the movie came out. I could not find an original um, print before. They're very obscure. They're very rare. But I may be incorrect about this. But I do believe that this has stuff that that other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. This thing about this movie is it's obviously the last movie that Brandon Lee did. He was unfortunately killed while the production was going on. But they did complete the film. They had to change a lot of the plot element from the graphic novel to finish it, but um, yeah, it, it was kind of sad. Uh, but I take it heart when um, when that movie came out. I actually went to a, a comic book museum called Words and Pictures Museum in Northampton, Massachusetts, and they actually had the entire uh, book framed on the wall in panels. I got to tell you, I mean, that was a one once in a lifetime seeing the actual drawings of the crow panels up there because you could look close and you could see the pencil marks and where he inked and where he whited out and stuff mm -hmm. it was awesome I'm still waiting for my brother hanging out in the store we're gonna close things up mm -hmm. there's we must have well yes uh, there's um, a lot of movies we get just this so so many um, comic book characters turned movies and uh, he's digging out something yep we have Electra. <laughs> I got this actually at the Boston Comic Con last year, and I, Electra's really not in it. She's in the beginning, like the first few pages, and then it tells his backstory about the hand. It's her new costume. Or two. Yeah, that's the one thing about comic books and movies, is that when you wi read the comics, there are so many divertive storylines, and they don't necessarily follow that one length of storyline, like Watchmen. Watchmen actually is probably one of the best adaptions of a comic book to a movie. It's just an yeah. epic, epic story, but uh, Shanley's right, that is, that movie was very, very well done. Mm -hmm. But I can sit through like the th full three hour director's cut, but let me tell you something, it is a marathon. You have to sit through the whole thing. New inventory, New inventory yes. Ooh, look at that. The Invincible Iron Man. <laughs> It's made out of metal, too. I think that's kind of funny. That is funny. <laughs> and uh, something you might appreciate. All right. Ooh! The Man of Steel! Made out of steel, probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I get you. I get you back on Superman, and you, you leave me hanging with the Wonder Woman. Oh God! Let's try that again. Wonder Woman. All right. You know what? Uh, this that, is I'm, a good show. I, I'm actually. I'm never gonna. We're never gonna see that in here. We're still just killing time until my brother gets here. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's working. It's working. It's working. Well, we gotta get, we gotta break out the pod racing game so I can wear this. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I hear my brother coming in now. So, so we're gonna close up the store. Yes, we are. Good night.